What is up, Warrior Rising family? I am Alyssa, and here we talk to amazing veterans with incredible backgrounds and stories in the businesses that they are leading. Warrior Rising is the premier nonprofit for veteran entrepreneurs. Today, we have Derek Clark, who I got the privilege of meeting in Iowa. So Derek, welcome. And tell us about your experience. Uh, thank you for, for, for doing this, for having me here. Uh, this Absolutely. is like, it was an amazing experience. I loved it uh, from, from start to finish. So even before showing up in Iowa, yeah. uh, really, really good. There was the, you know, like there's the, the warrior Academy and just, I've actually, my experience started a couple of years ago because I started going to the, the pitch competitions in Utah. Yeah. Okay. And so I was, you know, the first time I was like, this, this is, this is a really good thing. And then as my business developed, actually, you know, went again and, you know, wanted to want to really see what it was that I, I should be looking for, what, what kind of things I'm missing, yeah. things that, you know, things that, that people are, are pitching, how they're pitching it. And uh, it, was, so it was, so that lead up was a good experience. Plus the warrior Academy um uh, it made me think i used to have this i i, I would tell people you know I, I i train body language when they when they would ask you know hey what's your what's your business and some people are like well that's really interesting but i realized that you know other people do that too and when i if i pitch it's got to be something with pizzazz because i'm watching these other people and it's it's not just it's not just i'm making this cool thing it's like I like like it's this cool thing like times ten, yeah. And so I'm like I I gotta up my game, and uh, so like like that whole thing, and even before like we had classes, we had classes together with the other uh, with the other uh, cohort, the the other cohort members, the the other competitors, mm -hmm. and like like just getting to meet them, and like from that moment on, we were sharing each other's stuff on social media, mm -hmm. and we actually built a built a good bond we still uh, we still talk to to each other on a regular basis outside of uh, that that event so like like the whole thing just a good collaboration good uh, experience pitching it was like the first time i was actually pitching in front of judges in a, in a live audience um and uh, the 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 coaching and training that led up to it the actual experience of of just meeting and getting involved with not only the other competitors, but mentors and and investors, and uh, really like it was it was a it was a a full blooded American experience. Yeah, yeah that's what I'm talking about. I'm about to say your pitch, and it's interesting to hear that you did some practice beforehand and went to different events to try to tune it up. And you and I remember you had saying that yours changed even while you were in Iowa because I remember laughing. And not because it was just like, oh my God, get this guy out of here. No, it was just funny. And it was like, you had a really great, a really great message, but at the same time, it just had that spark of like, you livened up the crowd. If they were asleep. They weren't during your, your, your pitch. <laughs> the, thing, the thing I was struggling with was the, the cause you know, you want, you're, it's front of judges. So you want to do it yeah. exactly right. And so that was like, I had things listed word for word, how I wanted to say it. Yeah. And yeah. I think that was really throwing me off. It was stressing me out a little bit. It was it, like I was forgetting things because yeah. just because the, like the whole like it's 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 a fun environment. It's a learning environment, but it's also like it's intense. Serious, yeah. And and so like like as soon as I got up there though, I there was a because I'm like I'm, I'm talking about like I, I up my game, my body language game. Uh, to spy school. It was like spy school for sales teams, you know. And and as soon as I said that, one of the judges that I had just met right before, um, I was like, I'm special agent in charge of body sites. Yeah. And she laughed. She was like, huh? Yeah. But she laughed because she was a former deputy director of the FBI. But I'd met her just before that. And so, like, I knew that she was going to be interested in that, like, that, part of what I was what I was pitching and she was like huh and I was like I knew you would like that yeah and like and from that moment on, moment on I was just like I'm gonna just go talk to the audience I'm just gonna like this is what I do normally if I forget some of the lines I don't care because I'm just gonna gauge the audience because that's what I do yeah so for everyone here uh 
Derek's business is called Body Sites. And it, like you said, it's spy school for salespeople. So go into what your business actually is so that everyone kind of spins up and how your military career and everything you've done led up to this. How did you become a professional in this yeah. spy school? Like I've always been like an entertainer by trait. I say trait, not trade, because I never got paid for it really. <laughs> um, but like I was always good at like, like when I do things, I, I, I could read people. It was a natural thing for me. But then I joined the army and became a counterintelligence agent. So I did a lot of investigative work and I did a lot of, it's almost like, 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 a, like a, an informant network, like a police informant network, Okay. but, but on a, on a global scale. Yeah. And so, so I, like I was able to interact and, and learn a little bit more about people with, with specific training. And then that was the thing that was the most interesting to me was was watching the body language, eliciting information without using questions, you know, like building rapport really quickly with someone that you just meet, which is what basically that's what spies do. Like they, they get you to feel so comfortable that, that you're just, here's all the information, please take it from me. <laughs> and, but, but the thing is that, that it, it transfers over into uh, away from, you know, intelligence collection to, uh, I, I need to make a sale. I need to, I need to understand what my clients are not telling me because they just feel uncomfortable. Maybe they don't want to offend me or, or they don't want to bring up their objections because they don't want them overcome. Or maybe they, you know, we're in a world today where people are not going to be offensive by saying, I don't like your product. So, so the, the engagement isn't as strong. We're spending more time looking at the phone in front of us than the people in front of us. And so, so those skills are getting dulled. My, my goal is to put those skills back on the whetstone, get them sharpened up and, and really be able to recognize and act better with recognize those cues and then interact better with other people. No, absolutely. And I would say even as any kind of a business owner, sales is somewhat of the foundation of it. What are the common struggles uh, that you see sales people now, sales people nowadays going through? I think the biggest thing is getting ghosted. Like when they, like things seem to go really well and everything is good. It looks, this is, you know, oh, they, they, they're agreeing with everything I'm saying. Yeah. And then when I call them back later, uh, it, like, like crickets, there's nobody there. I, I think you'll like sales team point when you, when you talk to them, they, I hear that a lot that they just, they're just not interested, but you can tell if they're not interested before by some of the things that they'll do with their bodies, some of the things that they say, and then you get a chance to, to address those issues right then and there while they're still at the table with you. Uh, but you gotta be able to see it. Yeah. It makes sense. So what, for any veteran entrepreneur that's looking to go through and, and start their own business, they're exiting the military, they're transitioning out, they're, they're facing, you know, the imposter syndrome or the, can I even do this? I don't know my life outside of uniform. What is your top one to three, or what are your top tips for that transitioning military member? So probably get help. Like, like one, get help. Like, like look for help. I, a lot of times uh, outside of the, in the military, it's a, it's a like, Hey, you know, Get yourself squared away. Fix yourself. Um, and and they really only talk about getting help when uh, and and only recently and you know as a, as like a PTSD thing. They're like, hey, if you're struggling with something, get you know get help. If yeah. you're if you're feeling that that you've been uh, you know sexually assaulted or violated or or even even uh, you know you've been offended that way, they get help, but they don't really talk about getting help for, you know, being a strong individual. That's just, it, yeah. it's more like a, like a, Hey, suck it up, be tough, figure out how to do stuff and, 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 you know, go forth and do good things. So, so, but it's okay to ask for, for help. There's uh, like, and, and with warrior rising, that was one of the, like, like even, even after, I mean, I, like I, I got assigned a mentor and, you know, the, uh, Jason was like, Hey, what do you need? And I was like, I was like, I really need help with this website because it's take, it's taken me forever to like, it's in a constant yeah. state of construction. It's like the highway that oh, we're, like, we're stuck in the traffic again. <laughs> the, so, 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 but there, there are resources available and there's people that want to help you. Uh, but sometimes you have to ask for it. And sometimes even if you don't know what it is that you want to ask, like tell them, like, I don't know what I shouldn't, you know, what I, what I, 
what, what I'm, I don't know what I'm not doing yet. Yeah. And uh, um, so, cause there's people that, that will, will help you walk you through that process. So that's probably top things, get that help. Uh, you know, second thing you mentioned imposter syndrome, really like for as, as, as much as I know about stuff. And, you know, when I talk to other people and I'm like, here's some basic stuff. And they're like, oh my gosh, you're blowing my mind. But, but it's, for me, it's, it seems like basic stuff. For me, it seems like, man, there's some experts out there that, that, that blow me away that, that it's, you, you've been given certain traits. You have certain assets that uh, other people don't have and they, and they need like introverts. Uh, mm -hmm. They're like, oh my gosh, I can't go on network. Uh, I'm not good enough with networking. <laughs> But and I wish I wish I could be like the the extroverts, you know. But but the thing is, the introverts are really good at networking when because they're better listeners. So so take your strengths, whatever it is that you're yeah. good at, realize that that you may not be an expert at it, but you're better than you may be better than a lot of people, or maybe it's, it's your particular strength. So yeah. like use that stuff. You like like accept the fact that you do things well. Uh, mm -hmm. even though, even though you make mistakes, I think the, the biggest thing about making mistakes, don't, don't be afraid to make them too, too, is that's like probably number three is because if you're perfect all the time, then you're intimidating to other people when you're making mistakes, when, and, and you accept it, you own it with confidence, then they're like, Hey, they, they make mistakes just like me. And it's more endearing actually than perfection. Yeah. And I mean, it kind of alluded to it in the beginning of our conversation to um, the whole networking piece and how the cohort in Iowa specifically, and I got to witness it firsthand was very, uh, you guys still talk and I still see everyone interacting and I still interact with the cohort as well. That network is so powerful in Warrior Rising isn't just, you know, here's some training, let's start your business. It's here's a very powerful network that will help elevate you and push you and, and engage with you and help you even beyond your time in the academy. And it was such a, it's such an amazing thing to continue to see happen. So yeah, that power of network is so incredibly important. I know when I was exiting the military, I didn't even really understand what networking was until I was entering the corporate side. And I'm like, there's like people's hands I need to shake and I need to interact and there's things I need to learn because now I'm entering a world that I know nothing about and I have to be okay accepting mm -hmm. the fact that like I know nothing about this world. So it's a really powerful thing and it's something you can get better at, especially with such an amazing community of people. So yeah, what uh, as far as balance, which is a very interesting topic and it's always the most common, like how do I achieve work-life balance or how do you balance business goals with your clients? Any of those dive into what, how your mind interprets those balances is, is that's you're asking me like, like one of those tough questions, you know, where I was yeah. saying, you're not always an expert in things. And yeah. like, that's one where I'm like, I, I, I'm, I'm, um, I'm, um, I'm more of a improviser than, a than, a okay, we're going to stick to the plan and, and do all of this. Um, so like, I'm like, I'm like a big picture. All right, we're going this way and I don't know how we're going to get there, but we're going to get there. And then, so, yeah. so that's something I, I actually struggle with sometimes is the, is the balance because I, 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 I need people in my life to keep me from going too deep down rabbit holes that don't go anywhere or that, um, it, just like sanity checks. I need for balance. I need help. I need, I need other people with me. I need people that ask me questions like, what's the goal again? It's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Goal. we're getting away from that. Uh, and, and so, but knowing that that's where I like, where I struggle with the balance is mm -hmm. actually a, a good thing. It's just the knowledge that that's where I'm, I'm, I'm weak on so that I can ask for that help that we talked about. Yeah, no, I love to hear that. And, um, so actually with this upcoming cohort that is now this online, like powered by GVSU, the warrior university that they're calling it. I've yeah. actually started adding a 15 minute segment where I talk to everyone about mindfulness, mental health, balance, things like that. So it's really interesting to see how things evolve, but also how important that is as an entrepreneur, because we forget to like take care of ourselves and balance some things within ourselves to, to be able yeah. to perform and have a successful business. So it's, it's really interesting to see things come full circle and where we can like rely on some of our strengths. Like, okay, I can, teach this to people but at the same time know that it's you can learn you can learn anything be open to learning 
like right. be, be receptive to it. So back to your business though, what is the most rewarding aspect of what you do as an entrepreneur? Uh, for me, it's because I engage audiences. And uh, so for me, it's hearing the feedback. It's, you know, at the end, they're like, so there, there's usually when I, when I talk to uh, an audience and I, and I say, hey, here's some things you can do to interact better with other people, then there's, there's two aha moments. And the first one is immediately following the, you know, where at the end when you're mingling and talking to the, to the audience after they're like, this was amazing. I really like this, this, and this. They, and they, so, so hearing that it was that, that a light bulb came on for them. That, that's awesome. And then hearing like a week later, maybe I run, run across someone and they're like, I didn't get it at the time, but like, like I saw what, like when I was talking to some other people, then all of a sudden I saw these things that you said would happen and they happened. And, and then, you know, then I, I knew that I should ask them some questions because they were, you know, because they, they were ex expressing a body language. So I was like, or hiding body language. So like, what, what are you hiding? So now I'm going to ask more questions and it became a reality for them because they could, they, they, they recognized something that, that they would have, they would have overlooked before. So, I, and I think it's, it's that is like, like I've helped someone open up their, their mind and consciously recognize some things that they would have otherwise ignored. Yeah, no, it's so, that's so powerful. And with, sales in general i mean it's it can be as niched as you want it to be if that's how you say it. some people say niched or niched whatever same thing <laughs> tomato potato Cash, do you cache. yeah exactly <laughs> do you have a specific niche you're working with are you looking to evolve what body sites does um where are you focused on now because sales is literally everywhere i did it in the plumbing sector and i mean plumbing not just plumbing but it's everywhere so that that's something that has been evolving over like, like since before the, the cohort and, and even now. And so yeah. like, I'm really trying to dial that in. I think when I was, when I went into like, Hey, this is my school for sales. Uh, like, like every time I, I talk about that, then everyone outside of sales says, but, but we want this too. We want to be spies too. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, oh, you know, we, they're like, they're like, uh, in fact, um, uh, like I've talked to since then, I've talked to a, like a group of accountants. I have talked yeah. to, you know, like, they're like, oh, we're, we're not looking at people. We're, you know, we're looking at numbers. And I'm like, here's how you talk to people. Um, I, I, it was, I talked to some, like the staff at university. Uh, I'm going to do a, like an executive class for that university. Oh, cool. Uh, so like there's, uh, I'd like to niche, niche down. But yeah. I, but it seems like the more people that I talk to, the you know it, it becomes more like like. But we want this too. Can you can you alter it for us? And I'm in that struggle right now, where like professionally, people say you have to really super focus on hyper focus on something and and do yeah. it per perfectly. You know, other people saying, what can you do for us? And so like, like I'm in that battle right now, um, yeah. where, whereas I, I like talking to the, to the salespeople, just sales in general, um, mostly the ones that have that direct contact with people. So, um, uh, like you're like, like, like door to door, eight, real estate agents, uh, even lawyers where they're, where they're selling, you know, selling their, their, their law skills, like looking for for that direct human to human interaction. And so where that is, then that's where, yeah. that's where like my, my niche is the most effective. Yeah. And I just keep thinking, I just keep picturing the classes, like, you know, the, the pink Panther, like Jacques Clouseau or whatever his name. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. Cause, cause, cause like, I mean, the that's, yeah, like, like, <laughs> like, like everyone's seen spy movies. And so it's so sexy. So they're like, everyone wants the sexy. The sexy yeah. toy. Yeah, and it's like so when you train these salespeople, I can imagine because it's like that spy piece, like turning salespeople to spy, pe like you know, spy sales, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, uh, there has to be. Is there like competition once they learn these skills? Or like I like want to outperform, you know, the sales floor that I work with because oh, now wrote, like I'm a just, better spy type thing. You just froze <laughs> up for a second. Um. So I was saying you like just, I. You just froze up for a second. Can you hear me now? 
Okay. So I was saying, I think I would imagine that with these new skills, the, the sales team would almost become super competitive. Do they start going, Oh, I can use these, these, uh, these skills I just learned. Um, it's going to be super like in a fun competitive environment. Is that what you see normally? Like, I'm a better um, spy. I don't know about, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, like spy games are fun too. Like, like, yeah. like, 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 like how many, how many, uh, you know, how many times can I get people to, to mirror me and do the things that yeah. I'm doing or, or whatever. Uh, your dog's going to make my dog start barking in a second. I know. So sorry. <laughs> She's um, must be a mailman. And, and in fact, that was one of the things that I was, I was toying with as far as like a, like, like one of the training things was just, a, we're going to do this training and now we're going to go like out into the real world. And, and I'm going to ask you to get this type of information from people just, you know, like, like information yeah. that they would, that they would want to use for, for selling or like, let's go to this networking event now. All right. Now everybody find, you know, six people that do these things, uh, you know, so, so that you're mm -hmm. like, like, and, and then you get points just to make them more fun. Yeah. I love that. So what, uh, to kind of close this out, what is the legacy you're looking to lead or what, what are your next steps or what information do you want to give to everyone before hopping off? Uh, so here's, here's the thing we, we talked about networking mm -hmm. and, uh, Probably the probably the biggest thing, and this I don't know about legacy, but I, I yeah. want people to feel really really comfortable with it. It's a hard thing for a lot of people, and just know that that when you network, everyone does it because they have to. But focus on on other people. Like like, what do you need? And you know, don't ask them. You know, don't ask them. Hey, so what do you what do you do for work? Like, be like like, what is what is super exciting for you? Let's, 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 uh, let's forget about work. Work is going to pop up because they're going to bring it up, but get them talking about like really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, get them talking about things that they, that they're excited about and talk less. Like when you're networking, talk less, but, but listen more, ask questions later on. They're going to think that you are the most interesting person in the room. If you're not talking about yourself. <laughs> and you're asking them about them. That's so then, smart. And then because because if I mean the whole point is is to you know like you want to sell stuff. When you start pitch slapping right away, then people are like, okay, we should you know when are they when are they going to hurry up and finish their pitch so that I can pitch? That's awesome. So, so like the thing that I like in in all the things that I do, you you can't you can't guarantee what someone is thinking based on their body language and you can't guarantee that you're going to get a sale and you can't guarantee a lot of things, but what you can, we can do and we have, we do have control over is how you listen to people and how you treat the people. And when they feel special after talking to you, then they're going to come back to you for more. Then they're going to be like, what can I do for you? How can I help you? What do you need? Who can I recommend you to? And that's powerful. I mean, that's, that goes back to, you know, how to win friends and influence people. One yeah. of the basic, I mean, every person in business has probably read that. It's like, everyone wants it to feel important. <laughs> it's it does, but, it's, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's still hard to do unless you're consciously thinking about it. Absolutely. Well, Derek, I wanted to say thank you so much for hopping on and sharing with our community, your story and experience. It has been awesome as always. <laughs> No, thank you, Alyssa. I, like, appreciate you and your your dedication to Warrior Rising and Warrior Rising's dedication to us. So, thank you so much. Absolutely. And where can everyone find you if they're interested in becoming a spy? I am on bodysites.com. Right now, it's it's currently being updated, but uh, you know, eventually it'll. Like, we'll, we're working some stuff out, but, uh, yeah. but you can find a lot of like different types of classes that they could, that you could take and uh, types of trainings. And that's basically the, like, like, you know, where, where else you could go on social media to see, to see certain posts and things like that. It would be, you would, you would start at, at bodysites.com, B-O-D-Y-S-I-G-H-T-S.com. Uh, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you again for everyone listening. This, this channel right here is exclusive to talking to the veterans that make Warrior Rising the premier place to be as an entrepreneur. So thank you again, and we'll see you next time.